Hi everybody. So in this video, we're going to carry out a chi-square test to see if a Poisson distribution is a reasonable model for this distribution. If you want to work along with me in this video, you can download a copy of a PDF from my website. I'll leave a link in the description below. So we're told that a bus station records how many buses arrive late each day over a period of 100 days. The following results were calculated. It is suggested that the number of late buses follows a Poisson distribution. We've been asked to conduct a test at the 5% level of significance to determine whether the Poisson distribution is a reasonable model from this data. So the first thing we need to do is we need to state our hypotheses. We need to have a null hypothesis, which we call HL. And this is that the number of late buses follows a Poisson distribution. Then we state a second hypothesis, which is the alternative, which we call H1. And this is the number of late buses does not follow a Poisson distribution. So if we say that X is distributed with a Poisson with an average of lambda, where X is the number of late buses, then we need to calculate lambda, and we can calculate this from the table. This is just for mean average. So lambda will be zero lots of 48. We're just going to multiply each of these together and then divide by the 100, plus one lot of 26, plus two lots of 10, three lots of nine, four lots of six, and five lots of one. And then we divide all of this by the 100. We can work this out and we get lambda is 1.0t. Now, because we've calculated lambda from our data, this will take away one degree of freedom. We'll come back to that a bit later. So we've got lambda. Now I'm going to sketch what the chi-squared distribution would look like. So it should look something like this, where all the data is contained below this curve and the curve is skewed. Now, because we're looking at a 5% level of significance, our critical value will be about here. And the area underneath this part of the curve will be, the, will be 0 0.05. And this is the reject HL region. So the critical value separates the rejection region to the do not reject region. And if this is 0 0.5, then the area underneath this part of the curve will be 0 0.95. And this is do not reject HL. So we need to find the critical value. And to do this, we need the degrees of freedom. We've lost one degree of freedom here. But to find the number of columns, we need to work out the expected frequencies. So we need to find the probability of x equaling 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now we could do this using a formula, but it's a lot easier to do it on our calculators. If we go to home, we'll choose distribution. And then we want to scroll down. And we'll press press on PD. Now in this instance, I'm going to create a list. And the x values will be our number of late buses. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we've worked out lambda to be 1.02. So I'll execute that. And now we've got our probabilities. I'll just make a note of these. So the probability of x equaling 0 will be 0 0.3605. The probability of x equaling 1 will be 0 0.3678 and so on. So in the exam, it's a good idea to write down each of these probabilities, even though they've been calculated on the calculator. So now we've got a probability, we can work out the expected frequencies. We've got a 36% chance of x equaling 0 out of a total of 100 days. So if we just multiply this by 100, 
will get the expected frequency of 36.05. When x equals 1, again we'll multiply this by 100 and we get 36.78. When x equals 2, we get 18.75. When x equals 3, 6.37 and then 1.62 and 0 0.3. Now whenever we run a chi-squared test, we need the expected frequency to be at least 5, which means in this case, we need to combine the categories for 4 and 5 because neither of these have an expected frequency of 5 or higher. So if we bring them both into the 3 column, then we'll add the 6.37, the 1.62 and the 0.3 and we get a total expected frequency of 8.29. We also need to add the observed frequencies together as well. So this will give us a total of 16. So now we can work out our degrees of freedom. We've got four columns. So we, so we need to take away the last column. So the degrees of freedom will be the four columns. Take away one for the last column. And take away another one because our parameter was calculated from the data. So we'll take away one more and we get two degrees of freedom. So our chi-square test will have two degrees of freedom and a significance level of 0 0.05. We can go to our chi-square distribution table. We have two degrees of freedom, a significance level of 0 0.05. So we're looking at a critical value of 5.991. I'll make a note of this on our graph, 5.991. I'll make a note over here as well. So now we've got our critical value, we need to find our test statistic. If it falls to the right of a critical value, we know to reject HL. And if it falls to the left, we know we don't reject HL because we'll be in this region. But to work out our test statistic, this will be the sum of the square of the observed minus the expected values over the expected value. And we can calculate this from a table. If we go back to our calculators, we'll go to calculate mode. We want the 48 minus the 36.05. We want the square that and then we'll divide it by the 36.05 and we get 3.96. We'll move on to the next column. We want the square of a 26 minus 36.78 divided by our expected value. And we get 3.16. We'll move on to our third column. We've got 10 minus 18.75, all squared, divided by the expected 18.75. And this will give us 4.08. Then we'll look at our final column. We'll have 16 minus 8.29, all squared, divided by v 8.29. And this will give us 7.17. So to find our test statistic, we'll add all of these together and we get 18.37. Now when we compare this to the critical value, we are clearly far to the right, which means we're in the rejection region. So we'll say that because the test statistic is greater than the critical value, we'll say we reject HL, the Poisson model is not a reasonable model for the number of late buses, okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe, and you can download the full lesson and the PDF that accompanies this video from my website, mrmathematics.com. I'll leave a link in the description below.